guys so today's actually not a mini tea it's actually one of those um like one topic of video videos before we get into the video obviously second channel in the description any other links like social media links all that good stuff but on my second channel we are about like what 12,000 away from 100k so if you want to be a part of the before 100k gang then you guys can obviously subscribe and do all of that there's five videos on there so you know get variety so before we get into the tea i just want to thank raycon for sponsoring this video so if you guys don't know raycon is a brand that makes earbuds so this is the everyday e25 earbud they look like this when you get them in the box i got the rose gold ones which i'm very happy about so the actual container looks like this i have one of them in right now um and it feels super strange because they have it's got like a noise isolating fit which is why when you get them you have to get your perfect fit i have just the ones that they came with because those are the ones that fit me really well but they go from extra small to extra large so anyone can get a good fit and then they can have noise isolation which basically kind of you're still aware of your surroundings and you kind of hear what's happening around you but the noise is definitely like lower than usual which is really fun making it now when everyone's stuck at home with people <laughs> so i have these ones in this is what they look like in the rose gold is super pretty and definitely suits my aesthetic but they look like this they open up and there's this really strong magnet here they just like fall back into place which is really cool so you don't fall out or anything so you don't lose them which is really cool. These obviously don't have wires, as you guys know, the no wired earbuds thing has been a big trend nowadays and it's life changing, I'm telling you. But other earbuds are highly expensive. These start at half the price of regular premium earbuds, uh, but they are just as good sound wise and they have six hour long battery life. Oh incredible you don't have to worry about them for six hours once you charge them you're good to go i've used other earbuds and i currently in my house have four pairs i believe of that specific earbud because they all break on me they all just stop working and they are expensive these start at half the price so you're starting off at a much more affordable price point than any other earbud company there are many colors to choose from on the website so you can pick whatever fits your aesthetic or whatever you see fit for you like i said i've got the rose gold it's so stunning so sleek so pretty uh i love those these earbuds have such good bluetooth pairing so you don't have to worry about that they work seamlessly with this new model that there, there are more compact designs so the box is really tiny and can fit into your pocket uh they have more base uh like i said six hour long battery life you can't go wrong with that and if you use my code angelica Owls at buyraycon.com so that's buyraycon.com forward slash angelica Owls, you will get 15 percent off on top of the already extremely affordable price so if you're trying to get yourself some bluetooth wireless earbuds that are super discreet you can't even tell they're there then use my code at checkout yeah let's get into the video today's video is about jeffree star it's not kind of what you guys think it is uh i am not here to talk about darby vanity or stuff like that i think there are channels that are already doing that kind of content and they were doing that kind of content before darby vanity situation so i don't think it seems disingenuous coming from them for example creep show arts ripzilla chris hansen they're all people that have done this kind of content before before and they're more comfortable kind of covering that kind of stuff i'm a drama channel i shouldn't be covering that kind of stuff i just don't think i'm in any position to kind of talk about any of this stuff but what i'm going to talk about is drama because um that never seems to miss jeffree star the mum's basement interview podcast with keemstar colossal's crazy and face banks so i'm gonna start off just straight away by saying face banks and keemstar could not be any more slicky than they were. They were like, oh, he's such a pleasure to be, like he might be, but he's still an awful person and you gotta acknowledge that. And the only, only logical person and the only person that actually questioned, required answers, if Jeffree Star was dancing around the question, he would ask it again and be like, well, can you, can you explain that? Was Colossal is crazy. He's actually a British commentary channel, I believe. And he usually just does like audio recordings with them from Britain and they're in America, obviously. And he was the only logical person that didn't seem to be phased by Jeffree Star's fame, which I could highly, highly appreciate. I really appreciated the fact that he was just like, I'm just gonna ask you the damn questions. First, they start off with just like an introduction to Jeffree Star, which I think everyone knows who Jeffree Star is. They kind of, you know, hyped up his career and stuff. I am gonna put like inserts of clips of the podcast in between what I'm saying, just to kind of show you guys what's up. But I can't put in the whole podcast, obviously, because that would be not cool. So if you guys want to watch it, it's it's been re-uploaded to YouTube now, but it's also on Spotify. So those are the two ways you guys can listen to it if you want to just get all the info. First of all, I believe it was Jeffree Star that referred to, I have just a bunch of notes. So, because when I heard the first few minutes of that podcast, I was like, 
because you're so big and because you become so so massive online and everything's doing so well what happens when you know you have all the success is there's uh, a lot of people <laughs> that will attach <laughs> drama and stuff to your name uh, and, and try to expose some stuff in the past i mean it's happened with me it's happened with everybody um but right now there is all this drama surrounding yeah. you yeah blood on the dance floor none of this is drama um at least not to the people that are taking this seriously so i think calling it drama is just kind of he then says that none of the drama channels reached out to him for a, to ask questions well i wonder why because i'm blocked many drama channels are blocked many drama channels are also immediately unfollowed the moment they see something bad about you so it just goes to show that we can't get an unbiased and objective answer from you because if we're not licking you you're either going to block us or unfollow us or manipulate us the way you did with petty page so petty page actually had a conversation with jeffree star in dms where he was like i know you're going to get the truth out there because you know me you know what i'm like you wouldn't you know say anything that wasn't true about me which was basically just him in a manipulative way saying like if you do say something bad about me then you're clearly just an awful person because you know me you know the truth no no one does no one actually knows the truth no one knows the truth about anything and it is you and the people out there that are putting out bits of the truth or bits of lies to to you know present us the truth but none of us the drama channels the audience none of us know the truth and we will never know the truth that's essential to know in this situation because i never want it to seem like i am overly defending for example people like james charles or tati or shane dawson or anyone like that because i don't actually know what happened and we would know what's happening if we were provided with proof but considering we were not provided with proof we can't make up our mind about anything because it all just seems like allegations and rumors right so it's kind of like i i hope i'm making sense in this it is just a lot of him dancing around the truth is what i'm saying so he was like no one's reached out to me and like i said most of us are either blocked or get manipulated so i don't think we're, we're going to get any truth out of you anyway so that's cool if you want to unblock me and have a conversation with me that's fine we can do that but you blocked me last year for telling you that you accuse people of stuff without any proof and when we demand the proof you call us toxic so i'm assuming your reaction will be the exact same this time because i have the exact same thing to say you accuse people of stuff when they are worthless to you without any proof and then people demand the proof you call them toxic even though you're the toxic one because you're the one that's starting the accusations without any proof. Then he says actually that drama channels are benefiting financially from the situation that they can go and pay their rent. But yeah, it's it's perfect timing, but a lot of these channels are, are making all these videos and they've never reached out and asked any questions. So that's my only problem is everyone loves to copy and paste all this information about all of us and make it seem certain ways, but they don't ever just ask, yo, what, what was this really about? So what's happening is, is all these drama channels are using me as a way to amplify the situation and they're all benefiting from this financially. Uh, they do and they need to pay their rent, but they're not donating any of the money to the victims to any to any lawyers to help them they're pocketing it all at no point in the chris hansen interview was it made clear where the donations are going i don't know if you guys watched the live stream but during the live stream there were a lot of donations i didn't go through and calculate it obviously i want to know where those donations are going from the chris hansen live stream because i sure as hell hope that it's going to help the victims to file police reports get lawyers uh everything you said that they should start a gofundme for i think that's where those donations should go before you decide to go on a podcast and chat about drama channels monetizing that content because at least they're bringing awareness to it chris hansen skipped around questions and basically made you out to be the innocent hero in this situation while also receiving probably three grand worth of donations and then not saying where they're going which to me means they're going to his personal pocket so before we point fingers at other people let's point fingers at ourselves what did you do to help victims uh because i see you giving away 50 grand to random strangers on the internet why haven't you yet provided some kind of a financial aid or help to people that are now putting out these allegations if you feel so bad and you so hope that this all gets resolved why don't you help financially since you're so rich since you're such a billionaire why don't you help then keem calls those videos hate videos is what i have written here that keem star says the phrase hate videos a lot of them try it seems like a lot they're trying to send a lot of hate to jeffrey it's just jeffrey always inserting himself into drama that he doesn't belong in and then he gets angry when people use his name in videos but it's like we didn't tell you to insert yourself in this drama you did that willingly and now you're angry because not everyone is like oh yes queen you snapped on them because some of us actually listen to what you say and some of us actually see the contradictions and the lies so not all of us are going to be like yes queen you go drag them like 
So then he says that he lied about sending stuff to this like very sketchy website and he also mentions that he would lie about drinking alcohol. Jeffrey Star back in the day used to tweet and lie about a bunch of sh not just about Jack Daniels, I also tweeted about allegedly sending banned guys to him to then use for revenge, which I never did, but I did lie about it. So what you're doing is admitting that you're a compulsive liar. Because if you feel the need to lie about something silly as drinking alcohol, then you're gonna lie about more serious things. What I'm seeing from these interviews is that more and more, Jeffree Star unknowingly, I guess, admits to being a compulsive liar. And it, and it all adds up because of the amount of times that he flip-flops between two opinions about things. And so he'll be like, oh, James Charles is this. And then James Charles is actually my friend. And then I miss James Charles. And then James Charles is banned from my house. Actually, I was sent in DMs a timeline of the Bi Sister scandal. And then I figured out that it was made by Sebastian Williams in his video. It was basically a timeline, I'm gonna put it up on the screen, of all the times that Jeffree Star flip-flops between opinions. And it's, it, it's just, it goes to show. Then Colossal says the craziest thing I needed him to say. And he said, isn't it a bit strange and a bit of a coincidence how many dangerous people you choose to hang out with? Jeffrey, a bit of a harder question. Uh, do you find it interesting, like in terms of coincidence, that you've been in contact with so many of these depraved criminals over the years? Like even if you don't know they're dangerous from the get-go, it's very coincidental how many of your friends are dangerous people and Colossal was like isn't it a bit of a coincidence how many of your friends end up being really dangerous people and I don't think a lot of average people can say that so he's like it's very strange how all these it's either that you attract these dangerous people or these dangerous people are attracted to you or you're attracted to them in some sense so it's like isn't it a bit bizarre how many dangerous people you have as ex-friends and that you then need to expose so i thought that was insane and obviously jeffree star danced around the response i don't think it's a coincidence i think when the music scene was full of hundreds and thousands of people there's going to be people that do f up it's just bizarre that you've had so much contact with these people there's so many examples of them is he attracted to that type of person or coincidence keep propping up here and there i mean you've got to point it out what blows my mind is that every time people mention these like situations jeffree star's like well you know it was 10 years ago it was like a completely different scene criminals are criminals 10 years ago 20 years ago now criminals are criminals you can't tell me that some kind of a crime was okay because it was 10 years ago it was the myspace scene like people just did these things like it just because people did these things doesn't make it okay and then he uses the phrase that we're trying to cancel jeffree star for the 10th time which is the perfect representation of him as a person first of all yeah people constantly are attempting to cancel him not because you know cancel culture bad but because he needs to be held accountable for his actions and the fact that we are having to cancel him for the 10th time in a row for very serious stuff is telling of who makes it to the top and he always once again downplays it like this is all just our ploy to cancel him as if we're not talking about an actual criminal why is everything about you why can't you just turn around and be like i'm sorry for the lack of care and attention that i put to this situation i'm trying my best right now to fix you know my past mistakes and i am just here to also bring awareness to the situation but instead it's me 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 why am i getting cancelled for the 10th time in a row why am i being blamed for this well because you messed up that's why at the 44th minute they start talking about james charles so he's still pushing the narrative that james charles is dangerous a danger to society if you will but there's this other situation that happened recently with james charles where um, when oh, that God. whole thing went down, like you put out some tweets saying that there's a reason why my boyfriend uh, isn't letting James come yes. over to our house anymore. Haven't I'm not going to talk to him. Haven't seen him since Toddy's birthday. He's a danger to society. And then you had a follow up to tweet where it was like basically saying everyone keeps asking me for receipts. I have much to say. What what's going on with that? Like, what was the ending of all that? Like, where did that all end up? I'll tell you. Okay, go ahead. I'll tell you the ending. Is James one one quick one thing okay. real quick? Is James Charles a danger to society? Is he a predator? Kim, <laughs> listen. That was a long pause. But the thing is, right? Talking about the timeline, Sebastian Williams's timeline. There is a lot of flip-flopping. If he's such a danger to society, why would you then expose your fans to him further and make it seem like you guys are cool? Because if you think he's such a danger to society and that there is proof for the allegations, why did you then, like last month, tweet out that James Charles is killing it as usual? Why would you do that? Because then your fans are confused. They're like, oh, so James Charles is fine now. But then you go on a podcast and you go, no, James Charles isn't fine. Make up your mind. This is once again, you having this alleged proof about someone being a danger to society and still exposing your fans to them. It is a continuous 
thing that you do. He also has basically no proof and the proof he has, he can't say publicly, which I understand, but he was like, oh, I can say it off air. Why don't you go to the police? And then Colossal comes again with another bang. He stays silent a lot of the podcast is what I'm realizing. So that means because Colossal isn't involved in a lot of the conversations, like the chit chat in between, he has a lot of time to process what Jeffree Star said and then hit him with a bang. And he did that so much. He would stay silent for minutes at a time and then just come in and be like, well, can you elaborate on what you just said? So just now, uh, they start talking about James Charles and they start like joking and going, oh, tea shade, like these grown men, like, okay. Colossal stays silent for a bit and he goes, okay, but isn't this James Charles situation kind of very similar to the way the Darby situation played out? Is this another case of what happened before with the other guy? No, this is some... Is there a possibility of that? Because I mean, they were telling you about this guy, which turned out to be true now. Is this possible with James? But this is exactly the same thing that happened before, right? It's, a, it's actually not. What? So if you want, we can pause and I can go in another room and play Banks, what I have on my phone, and he can determine if he would have sent the same tweet. At the end of the day, I'm not going to out a victim of James Charles. And Jeffrey Sarge didn't know what to say. And it's true. It's the exact same situation just 10 years later, except there is actually a lot of proof for Darby and there's no proof for James Charles, but Jeffrey Star's inserting himself into this drama is exactly the same. Just insert yourself in the drama and then get angry when people don't like that you insert yourself in this drama. So then he threw Tati under the bus. He basically said that Tati shouldn't have made that video and it was all Tati starting these allegations. Everyone wants to make me like, you ruined James Charles' career. No, Tati did and uploaded a 40 minute video about him and she should have never uploaded that, but she did. And for some reason, James thinks that me and Shane tried to ruin his life and orchestrated the whole thing. Like we f***ing care. You know Shane longer than me, Keem. You think we care to drag or ruin someone? For what? We're our own superstars. We're our own lane. We're doing our own thing together and we've made so much magic. Why would we want to ever bring someone down? We don't well, give a f But didn't you praise Tati for this? There's a tweet. He said everything Tati said is true. And then he would tweet every single million that Tati gained on YouTube in subs. He was like, well done Tati for five, six, seven million. So really, why are you throwing her under the bus now? is because you're still somehow gaining subs and she isn't, is that why? Because you don't want to be treated the same way, you don't want to be cancelled. And then he basically said that when all of this went down, everyone unfollowed James Charles, including like celebrities. And then he used the phrase, because we all finally can. Everyone unfollowed James. Yeah. Not just about my tweet, you think half of those celebrities, Kylie, all those people unfollowed him. It was like, wow, like we all finally can. And As if all of these celebrities had all this like tea and they were all in the know. And then when all of this went down, it's all like they pressed this unfollow button. They were like, wow, finally we can unfollow him. When really Kylie Jenner unfollowed him and that was a big deal, but Kylie Jenner doesn't really follow many people. And she still invited James Charles to her house for her Kylie skin launch. So I think they're fine. Um, I think just not everything is based on followers, you know? It's crazy that you bring up Kylie Jenner because you're the one that's been shitting on her for the last two years of her life, this 22 year old woman, uh, and he's a 34 year old man. And she was actually on James Charles's channel, not yours. And she is more of a household name than you will ever be. So I just think it's insane that that's the name he chose to bring up when he treats her like absolute garbage on the internet for absolutely no reason. Like she's never even acknowledged his existence and he just keeps on going, he just keeps on trying. And then when um, they said, I think it was either Colossal or like Keem that basically said that people thought, or was it Jeffrey that brought this up? I believe it was Jeffrey that brought this up. He said um, that people thought that he tried to cancel James Charles because James Charles was getting more famous than him. And then he said, well, no, that's not true because I'm in my own lane. I'm superior to James Charles. I wouldn't need to cancel him. So it, it wasn't, oh, it, me, Shane, and Tati against this person. Shane didn't ever really say anything. Yeah, I tweeted out um, a few things and it was Tati's 40 minute video, but I get it. I'm more interesting. She's safe. And I think in some sick way, James thinks that me and Shane were behind it. I, I used to love drama. I don't care anymore. And I never wanted it to be that. Like it wasn't a soap opera, you know? Um, and I just think that Tati, I mean, she took a really big hit, right? I mean, I don't yeah, know if yeah. she's still in the red, but it's it's a different vibe. There's no competition. I've been doing this for oh, a come very on. long I'm time. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Stop, Keem, you no can't, you cannot Jeffrey, try. come on. He loves it. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Jeffrey, like, I, dude, there's other people that do shows similar to mine, and, like, I want to beat them. I, you don't become a billionaire if you don't have competitive, like, nature about you. There is oh, I have competitive nature. I love it. Like, I love business. I love watching people's numbers. But, like, like his fans really try to create always an animosity. Like, I've been doing this for so long, and I'm really in my own lane. Yeah, we're, we're, we're boys in beauty, but I'm a, I'm a f icon, Keem. <laughs> no, it's really... Yeah. It's, and it's, they it's can try really to pit us against each other. He gained more than you on you. I don't f 
don't care if you game more on YouTube. That, like to me, it, it isn't a numbers game because I already won. And I know that people may say financially that they may not be winning, but to me, I won. Is that so? Is that really so? Because hear me out. I'm not here to throw shade or tea or anything. Well, I am because that's what my channel is about. But James Charles was cancelled, called a danger to society, lost 3 million subs, and then regained those 3 million subs within a matter of weeks, and then surpassed you in subs just recently, at the age of 19. I think that's why you're doing all of this, because you're threatened. Because your time on the internet is slowly coming to an end, and I don't mean subs-wise, I mean there aren't many like full-on adults on YouTube. The oldest people that I know that have like very successful YouTube channels are Jenna Marbles and Shane Dawson, who are both in their 30s, and so is Jeffree Star. But I think people can definitely relate more to people in their age group, and most of the audience on YouTube for like beauty gurus and stuff are people between the ages of about 15 and 25. So they can definitely relate to someone their own age than someone much older than them. Anyway, I'm not gonna even speak about Jeffree Star Cosmetics because I have a lot of opinions on that. I think his main customer base is his cult followers who don't buy the products to use them or because they actually enjoy them. They buy the product as a piece of merch. I think his cosmetics line is a merch line it's not a cosmetics line and i never hear any of his products becoming people's staples have you ever i bet there's going to be like a few smaller channels that maybe are fans of jeffree star that bring them up but i mean in the grand scheme of things how many times have you heard someone say that a jeffree star cosmetics product was someone's monthly favorite or annual favorite Tell me, tell me how many times did you really hear that happen? He released something that could have become his staple product, his concealers and powders, and I haven't seen a single person use them since. As much as I think Jeffree Star is highly successful, super rich, all that good sh I think he heavily overplays, over exaggerates, that's the word I was looking for, over exaggerates his success. I think he's highly successful and he doesn't really need to do that. I just wish I actually knew how much Jeffree Star's cosmetics company made but because it's I believe a private company will not know uh but he's claiming that he's actually worth more than Kylie Jenner are you a billionaire yet like because like I'm over here like cheerleading like did he hit the beat did he hit the beat when you asked me you I had yet? not but in this moment uh net worth of Jeffree Star Cosmetics is like 1.5 it's crazy whatever teach their own so then Colossal comes in with another bang he says don't mention the name of the person who who has these allegations against James Charles. Just tell us, you know, roughly what the allegations are. You know, you have to say the name. It's not like that. And then he says something very telling. He says, no, well, James Charles got enough of this, which is basically him saying, I want to protect James Charles, a danger to society. I want to protect a danger to society. Can you just, can you at least say what they were? The allegations, can we call it that? without saying the person's name or giving references which would give it away. Views and money, not you guys specifically, but people out there do. And they really use this stuff and it's really gross. And I think that James has dealt with enough mental abuse. If James Charles is ever listening, call me or, or sit down with me and I will show you what was shown to me. So he's not gonna expose these allegations. And two, then he says, call me James, we can have a private conversation about this. Why not a public conversation? Why not a police report? And then apparently James Charles is the next week's episode. So we're gonna get more tea, more shade. I wonder if James Charles listened to this episode or if he's been told about what's been said about him. And I wonder what his reactions are. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything comment down below and subscribe. Cause I post videos every time something happens. Social media links and second channel in the description and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.